Good evening everyone, time for episode 4 of The Last Admiral. And we'll take up where we left off last time, with Aklon gifting the family sword, Shinpa Gruul, to Vlad. Okay, we'll begin at the bottom of page 32. <clears throat> Lower your defenses, Vlad, Aklon instructed. Open the windows of your mind. Old memories flooded his thoughts. Witnessing his father's birth through Theron's own eyes, he relived his childhood, his schooling, and his journeys. He experienced his losses and his loves, his victories and defeats. He felt his heartache and hardship as he watched his companions fall in countless battles. He heard the words of the Coven's prophecy. He lived as his grandfather did, through the Queen's endless scheming and treachery that eventually led to his demise. There were three minds then, individuals still and yet as one. Vlad felt his father's pain at the loss of his mother, a pain somehow different from his, an emptiness that he had never known, never before known. He knew his father's hopes and dreams, and the fear of what the future might hold. Knowledge had always been his father's mightiest weapon. He had never withheld that from him, but now things that he would never have otherwise known poured into him, as if his mind was now a compilation of three, and they of each other. They discussed the future and many possible outcomes. Combining their wisdom, they forged a plan, and many plans within plans. They created a framework that would either spell the ultimate destruction of their house or bring victory and freedom to their people. When they were through, the stage was set. Aklon released his grip. The sword passed to his son. Use it in victory, my son. To victory, Vlad said elatedly. Bowing then in unison, Vlad lowered the sword and set it down on the floor to his right. His limbs, limbs trembled with weakness unbidden as the tremendous weight of his responsibility came to bear on his thoughts. Kneeling eye to eye with his father, there was then a great understanding between them. Wraith, Aklon called, bring my other son to me at once. Wraith was characteristically nearby. Yes, Admiral, and have the cooks prepare an early meal. I must depart before nightfall. Shall I have your horse prepared, sir? There is no time for that. I will return to Terribilis by way of magic. The eleventh sails at dawn. Keep the sword safe, lad, Aklon said. While you are in school, hide it well in a place that only you can find. When the time comes and you must go off to war, then you will need Shinpa Gruul. I will, Vlad promised. I know that you will. Bowing together in unison, they stood. Derek entered soon after, looking boyish and excited to capacity. Come and sit with us, Derek. What is it, sir? Aklan bowed to his son as they sat together at the table and said, The time of our greatest fears has arrived. I have prepared you both as well as I know how. I have challenged you, and you have exceeded my expectations. Remember that no matter what happens, I am proud of you, Derek. I have made you the inheritor of the estate, should Vlad and I pass on before you. Surely that will never happen. Now, Derek, let us shed no more tears between us. The battlefield can take any soldier at any time, and we must always be prepared for it. Yes, sir, Derek replied. The library should provide you with all the information that you need in order to continue your studies on your own. You have unique God-given talents. Don't waste them. I won't let you down, Father. If you desire it, you have the capacity to become one of the Arch Magi. Vlad shares that gift, but he also possesses qualities of natural leadership. His Shang Sun tutors will likely focus on that gift above all others. 
thus slowing his advancement in the arcane sciences. He will need an archmage as his, at his side one day. May that wizard also be his most trusted friend and brother. I swear that it will be so. No, Aklon urged. Don't swear such a binding oath. However, if fate should allow it, the two of you may rise to greatness one day. Now, Derek, you must read over my will and bear witness to my last wishes. He did so, and signed his name to each document. Vlad pressed the signet ring into melted wax to make it official. Wraith entered. Dinner is ready, sir. Shall I have the cook serve it here? No, thank you, Wraith, Aklon replied. I think that we should have our last meal in the kitchen, just like old times. Very well, sir. I shall have the table set momentarily. Thank you, Wraith. The kitchen. <clears throat> The house employed four cooks. One was an expert in cooking all manner of meats and seafood. Another was a talented baker, while the other two were good at preparing almost any dish that one might think of. Pomion, the quiet, was one of the latter types, and he had prepared a fine, quick meal for the departing admiral. In order to accommodate large parties of guests, his kitchen was rather large, equipped with a full dish room and the first running water system of its kind, it was both a curiosity and a wonder to visitors. Underground storerooms provided ample space for perishables and, ex and an extensive wine cellar. The main kitchen area had two great well-cast wood stoves, as well as a massive fireplace fitted with bread ovens. Three large, strategically placed food preparation tables were there, as well as one small dining table with six chairs where the house staff could take their meals. Often, Aklon would join them for dinner. He insisted that everyone employed on his estate was family, and he took steps to preserve the trust that he had built for so many years. Palmion was putting the finishing touches on the birds with a fine brush and a sweet honey glaze when Wraith entered. The Admiral will take his meal in the kitchen, Palmion, Wraith directed, like old times. I was just thinking the same thing for some reason, Dinner is ready when they are. Excellent, Wraith replied. I shall set the table. The masters will be here any minute. Wraith finished the job in record time, setting places for six to include young Crestus, the dishwasher. <clears throat> he also provided tea and fresh water for their beverages, as the Admiral would accept no strong spirits before a mission. Ah, Klon announced. It smells delicious. Everything is ready, sir. Well done, Palmion, Aklon praised. Please take a seat and let me serve you this afternoon. Certainly not, sir, Palmion replied. Oh, don't be silly, I insist. Aklon ushered Palmion and the others to the table with a broad smile. Derek, would you please take a quick look around the house and see if you can round up anyone else? Of course, father. Barely in his seat, he spun out of the room in a flash. Well, Palmion, what have we here? Roast chicken, fine golden biscuits, mashed potatoes, gravy with greens and steamed vegetables. Surely you have outdone yourself this night. Vlad, as you are now the master of the house, it is also your job to carve. Don't forget to save me a leg. I'll try not to, father. And as he was always starving, he went right to work. He was about half of the way through when Derek and many others returned. I think that's everyone, sir. Good work, Derek, Aklon asserted. But now we need another table. They all lent a hand, and in no time, everyone had a feast before them. Adeline and Lily, the housemaids were there, as well as Gregory Green, the stable boy, Trick the farrier, and the always singing Jago. The carpenter. It had been many months since they had all sat down to such a meal, and there was something special in this, in the air with this one. They ate, drank, laughed, and told old stories. It was just like old times, but such times never last forever, and when their time grew, grew short, Aklon had to tell them all the news. Thank you all for coming, Aklon said. 
My words cannot express the love that I have for everyone here. We are truly family, and though we may not all be of the same blood, we are blood just the same. That is why I cannot leave without telling you all in person that I have once again been called to war. But you only just got back, sir, said the bronze-haired Adeline. Yes, and, it's, and if this were just another routine mission, then I would not feel such foreboding. The Queen has divided the Eleventh. Never before has she sent us to sea with such a handicap, and I can only fear the worst. It sounds like treachery, Trick reasoned. Anyone who the people come to love too much have an awful way of disappearing. That's what I always say. No, Lily said. I'm sure that the Navy knows what they are doing. They probably don't think that the Admiral needs all those ships. I wish that were so, Lily, Aklon affirmed. However, I believe the trick is very close to the truth this time. It is for that reason that I have drawn up a new will. In a letter detailing my instructions for the house during my absence, Vlad is now the acting master of the house, and his word will be as my own. I know that all of you are capable, and for the most part, you will need no one to tell you what to do in my absence. Carry out my wishes, should I fail to return and look to Wraith while my sons are away at school. Don't talk like that, sir, Adeline said through tears. You speak as if nothing can be done to stop it. Oh, don't worry, dear Adeline, Aquan soothed. I have a hand to play in the days to come. Do not believe me dead until you see it with your own eyes. Let us just be a family now, and forget, forget about the storm that comes. We have love here among us, and that is special and rare beyond measure. Let us laugh and love some more, if only for a little while. Stifling their sorrow, they found courage and strength that was to their credit. Diego sang like the master tenors of the crystal choir, and his voice banished all the darkness away. <clears throat> Departure Sunset loomed, and the dwindling time forced Aklon's departure. With Wraith's help, the Admiral packed quickly. His service rucksack, equipment, and uniforms were all in meticulous order. His field uniform was well-pressed and immaculate. He wore black trousers and a red tunic, with a black belt and a polished silver clasp. High black boots and a gently curved service rapier in its scabbard. His coat was silver and blue, with silver buttons and a dragon insignia, denoting the rank of admiral on his lapel. His coat held many other secrets as well, for its many pockets contained the items that he needed to perform the actions of wizardry. Aklon thought of his family as he sorted through the necessary paperwork of his officer's satchel. After a final check, he was certain that his baggage was in order. Wraith, please bring my sons to me for our final meeting. You shall stand with us as well, my friend. Right away, sir, Wraith replied. <clears throat> Casting off. The sun was high and bright and a gentle southwesterly breeze washed over the island. Aklon looked westward, out of a great room window. His stables and barn stood to his right, and the brook that fed his bellows meandered away off to the southwest through rolling meadows. Patches of woods dotted the landscape, and here and there a few of his freemen's homes stood. Cattle, sheep, and other livestock grazed across much of the land, and Shang Sun's mist-capped mountains rose up steeply in the distance. Rose up in the distance, beg your pardon. Surely heaven could offer little more than what they had had here that every day. Inhaling deeply, his mind lingered on the richness of what his nose could tell. He never wanted to forget it. When he heard footsteps, his mind turned serious. Let us go with you, father, Vlad pleaded. Surely we can do more together than if we are apart. One day we'll fight together side by side, Aklon promised, but not today. Our destinies await us on different paths, but those roads may one day meet again. May that day be tomorrow, Father, Derek said. 
deeply moved, he replied. We have always been honest with each other, and this is no time for anything less. In the past I kept only a simple will, for I never believed that I might not return until this very day. Remember your grandfather's tale and of his betrayal. He battled the sentience for many years, only to fall at the bridge of Kalzakin, beside his beloved general, Durin de Gaulle. Using magic that no sentient possessed, an assassin shot him in the back, with a dart enchanted to kill him and none other. I never understood why the queen betrayed him, until Katora revealed the coven's prophecy. Prophecy to me that one day the queen would fall before Lucheron hands. Their prophecy will be either our salvation or our ruin. Then we are in just as much danger here, Vlad surmised. If we are going to survive, Aklon instructed, then we must stick to our plan. The queen will not act against us openly, but she might send an assassin or arrange for some unexpected accident. Always be on your guard. There is much for you to learn at the academy. Master the ways of the school, and you will understand the politics of Dragonia. Listen closely and understand the true intentions of your professors. Their faces and their words will always coat their hidden desires and agendas. Duty will demand that you act on your lawful orders, and surely the queen will use you to increase her power just as she has done with me. When our own power becomes too great, and we no longer seem useful to her, she will dispose of us. Okay, that's about all we have for time today. I hope you enjoyed this segment as Aklan prepares to leave on his mission. Thank you and have a good night. We'll take up again on page 40, about halfway down. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.